Father, as we look at your word now, breathe upon your word. Let everyone receive of you. Holy Spirit divine, let your word come with freshness. Let everyone hear your voice. Let it bring transformation. Thank you. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Everybody said? Okay. Right. I'm teaching a series. This is a new series. And I've titled it um, Focus. Somebody say Focus. F-O-C-U-S. That's the title. So I'm going to use the acronym F O. C-U-S to teach you a series and that will help you in your life in Jesus name. So turn your Bibles to John chapter 21. John chapter 21. Verse 1. After these things Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the sea of Tiberias. And on this wise shewed he himself. They were together Simon Peter and Thomas called Didymus and Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee and the sons of Zebedee and two other of his disciples. Simon Peter saith unto them, I go a fishing. They say unto him, We also go with thee. They went forth and entered into a ship immediately. And that night, they caught nothing. But when the morning was now come, Jesus stood on the shore. But the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said unto them, Children, have ye any meat? They answered him, No. Verse 15. So when they had dined, Jesus said unto, said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He said unto him, Feed my lambs. Verse 18. Verily I say unto thee, unto you, when thou was young, thou girdest thyself, and walkest whither thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thy hands, and another shall gird thee, and carry thee whither thou wouldest not. This spake he, signifying by what death he should glorify God. And when he had spoken, he had spoken this, he saith unto him, Follow me. Then Peter turning about, seeth the, dis the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayed thee? Peter seeing him saith to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? Jesus saith unto him, if I will that he tarry till I come, what is that to thee? Follow thou me. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Verse 13 of Philippians chapter 3. God verse 13. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. So I said I'm, I've just read those passages so I can get them out of the way. I am talking to you on what? Focus. People who are focused on the right goals and priorities in life are bound to make progress. Those who are not focused will struggle and they will feel frustrated constantly. 
Lack of focus will dissipate your energy, derail your destiny, and, and donate to you an acute sense of disorientation. That is what lack of focus will do. It will dissipate your energy. If your attention is split and scattered over 1,000 and 1 things in life, you will be constantly drained of your potentials. You will feel disoriented because you are not focused. Your ability to focus on the correct goals and priorities will determine your future. It will determine your destiny. It will determine your impact in life. Your relevance in the kingdom of God is proportional to your ability to focus. Hallelujah. If you are not focused, you will lose relevance. If you are not focused, you will not make impact in life. You will not make impact. If as a family, as you are traveling to Canada, as a family, if you lose focus, if every little thing that flies distracts you, you will not be able to achieve. You will just be going round and round the garden like a teddy bear, like the children sing. You will not make impact. But those who are focused, those who lock in. See, when I was in primary school, we used to do some uh, science. We take a magnifying glass. When the sun is up in the zenith, and we bring a paper, and we take the magnif and we, we, we focus huh, the prism. We focus the rays of the sun. We focus it on the paper. And what will happen? The paper will begin to burn. When we gather all the rays of the sun and beam it at one spot. But if you just put the paper like this, the paper will not burn. Until you direct the attention of the energy of the sun. You gather it together and focus it. Focus it. When you focus, you make impact. Hallelujah. But when you don't focus, you don't make any impact. You don't make any impact. So that's what I want to teach you in this series. I think it will be about four or five as the Lord leads me. If he permits me. Glory, hallelujah. So the first F in that focus, the first F I want to cover today, if I have time, I will cover two. Okay? I will cover F and O. But the O itself is another message entirely. So let me cover, let me see if I can finish the first one. What's the first F on focus? Number one, follow Jesus. Somebody say follow Jesus. Ah, you said, oh, we know that already. How is that, what has that got to do with focus? I will show you in a minute. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. If you don't follow him, you will lose your way. I'm telling you. You will lose your way. Look at John chapter 21, our home text. Go back to John chapter 21. Look at verse 19b, the end of verse 19. He said, and when he had spoken this, when Jesus had spoken this, Jesus said unto him, what? Follow me. That's what Jesus is telling you today. Follow me. Keep your eyes on me. I've got your destiny in my hands. Jesus, I've got the blueprint for your life in his hands. I will show you in the Bible in a minute. If you don't follow Jesus, you will miss your way. Life outside Jesus is meaningless. Life outside Jesus is a waste. You will soon discover that everything you achieve outside Jesus is a big waste, a big fat zero. I will show you in a minute. Follow Jesus. Look at verse 20, verse 21. Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, Lord, what shall this man do? You see? Jesus said, follow me. He, he, Peter turned back and he was looking at another man. And Jesus said to him, uh, Peter said to Jesus, uh, what will this, uh, Jesus, you say I should follow you. What, what about him? What will he do? What will he do? What did Jesus tell Peter? Look at it again. Look at verse 20, 22. Jesus said unto him, 
if I will that it tarry till I come, what is that to thee? What's your business? What's your concern about that? Follow thou me. It's a personal issue, this thing of focusing. Follow thou me. That's what Jesus is telling you. Leave that one alone. Let You follow me. Follow me. Why? When Jesus called Peter, his name is Simon. Huh? His name is not Peter. Simon, the son of Jonas. Simon Jonas. That is what is his name. But Jesus changed him to Peter. If you know the character of Peter, Peter is volatile. Peter is unstable. Peter vacillates. Simon, or rather, vacillates. Simon is unstable. But when he met Jesus, the owner of his life, the one who had the blueprint of heaven about him, Jesus changed his name from Simon to what? Peter. From being a vacillator, from being unstable to Peter means rock. Jesus changed him from vacillator, unstable, instability to being a rock. See, your destiny is in Christ. Find your stability in Christ. Outside Jesus, you are not stable. You are a weakling. So Jesus said, follow down me. As you follow me, you become who you ought to be. It's in Jesus you find purpose. It's in Jesus you find your dream fulfilled. Hallelujah. Amen. I said hallelujah. Amen. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. John chapter 8 verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them saying, I am the light. The light of the world. I am the light of the world. That's, these are the, that's one of the eight I ams or seven I ams of Jesus. I am the light of the world. There ain't no other light outside Jesus. Jesus is the light. This world is dark. This world is what? It's dark. There ain't no, no, no light outside Jesus. Verse where am I reading? Verse 12. Thank you for those who are following. I am the light of the world. He that followeth me. Why should you follow Jesus? See the reason here. He that what? Followeth me. Now, he didn't say he that followed me. <laughs> he that followeth. That means the person who continue to follow me. Who continue to come with me. Who continue to walk with me. He that followeth me. Shall not what? Walk in darkness but shall have the light of life listen he shall have the light that gives life the one who follow me shall have the light shall have illumination why should you follow jesus because when you follow jesus you will have the light of life if you don't follow jesus you will have the darkness of death that's the converse am i correct the converse is correct the one who follow jesus will have the light of life the one who don't follow Jesus will have the darkness of death. You will be constantly frustrated. That's why Jesus said, follow me. Follow me. You are the one that will gain when you follow Jesus. His light of life will illuminate your own life. It will illuminate every aspect of you. You will begin to see clearly. This is where I should put my leg. This is where I should not put my leg. The Lord will help you. Look at John chapter 15. Why should you follow Jesus? Because if you don't follow Jesus, you will not have a focus in life. When anything you focus on outside Jesus is a waste of time, you will soon discover that. John chapter 15, look at verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit for without me underline that in your bible without me ye can do nothing without me look at verse 6 if a man abide not in me he is cast forth as a branch and is withered and men gather them and cast them into what fire and they are those who don't follow Jesus, that's where they end. They become fuel for the fire of hell. 
those who don't follow Jesus at the end of the so I, I, I have this, I have a car, I have a house, I have a, this, I, they count all the material things they have. They think that is all that is in life, about life. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of the possession that he has. They have done research. Happiness does, you can't buy happiness. Satisfaction don't come. You say, I'll buy a big TV. They, me too, I've tried all those, you know. When I look at kids, they say, oh, what kind of phone do you have? Nokia. They laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I say, I can buy you if I want to buy you. If I want to buy 100 cars, I can. But I don't, I'm, I'm not into cars. I tell the children in the school like that when they start bragging with their phone. I was teaching them that a man's life does not consist in the, what you have. What you have is not you. What you have, human beings have a, that is, that is a void in you. Nothing you put in that void can satisfy it. Put sex, put food, put TV. Me too, I bought big TV. Now nah, I don't even like the TV. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Material cannot satisfy you. You are a spirit being. Material things don't satisfy spirits. They can't satisfy you. God did not create you so that you will be satisfied without him. The one who, the one who crafted you when he sat down in the council of the triune God and they said, let us make Esther in our own image. When God made Esther, God made Esther such that without God, Esther can do nothing. Without me, he can do absolute zero. Absolute zero. You can't do nothing without Jesus. Follow me. That's what he said. Follow me. He came down from heaven and he invited you. Follow me. Follow me. Keep your eyes on me. Hallelujah. My friend, would you follow Jesus? Would you make up your mind that this Jesus, I will follow him? You are the one that will be blessed. Why should you follow Jesus? Not only because you will have the light of life. Not only because without him you can do nothing. That is a song that says, without him... I can do nothing. Without him, life will be vain. Without him, I will be drifting like a ship. Oh Lord, without a sail. You will be drifting like, you know, a ship without a sail. You know what that means? It's going nowhere, no destination. Some people think they have a destination they are going. They're going nowhere. Without Jesus, you're going nowhere. You end up in hell. That's what Jesus said in verse 6. They will be filled for fire. You will not be filled for fire. Amen. Why do you need to follow Jesus? I'm talking about focus. I will tie it all up together in a minute. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 1. Let me begin to tie it together for you. This first one. 2 Timothy. Put it up. Put it up for me. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 9 to 10. Now, listen very well. This is why you need Jesus. It says, is that the beginning? Yeah? Who had saved us? And look up. I like reading with people. Who had saved us and did what? Called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own Hey, listen very well. Hey, everybody look up. He's called us according to his own. Underline that. His own. Underline that. His own word. And what? Which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Hey, listen to me. In the council of God, eternity passed before you were ever created. God have designed a purpose and a calling and a grace for you. And that purpose was hid inside Christ. Such that outside Christ you cannot find that purpose. That's what the Bible is saying. He says, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose. Listen, if you don't discover this God's purpose, you'll be constantly frustrated and defeated. His own purpose and grace, which was that purpose had been given us. We are inside Christ. It was hid inside Christ. 
like a man. He got a Bible, bought a Bible for his son. His son was going to college. And he put money, hid it in the Bible, and gave it to the son. And then the son got to college. The money the son went with, finished spending it. Then he said, he phoned daddy, daddy, money. Daddy said, read your Bible. <laughs> he said, I'll read, but is that what I will eat? Daddy said, don't ask, I switch phone off. Call daddy next day, daddy, money, I'm dying. Oh! Read your Bible. <laughs> daddy, is it Bible that we eat? Switch phone off. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Eventually, it, something hit his head. Let me just even obey my daddy. So he started reading the Bible. <laughs> He started reading the Bible. He met the money he needed in that Bible. Listen, everything you need is in Christ. Everything you need is in what? In Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. That purpose was given to before, listen, before the world began. Before the world began. Before the world began. God is eternal. God, eternity past, eternity future. God, I've seen you coming. God knew you before you were created. And everything you will ever need to fulfill purpose, to fulfill destiny, God crafted it and put it inside Jesus Christ. Such that if you are outside Christ, everything you are doing is a waste. A big zero. It's only in Jesus you can find satisfaction. Just look at me now. What do I need again? I have Jesus. Hey, I, I can't tell you when I sit down. I can stay in my house and be with my Bible for 24 7. Although my family will say, hey, You're telling them you don't need us now. I need them. <laughs> but I'm, what I'm telling you is this once you carry God in your life, you don't need nothing external to satisfy you. Yes, you are still human, you will still need the normal human food. But what I'm telling you is that your spirit now has what your soul is longing for Jesus the son of God outside Jesus you're a waste that's why you gotta follow him hallelujah that's why you gotta lock into Jesus and follow him give me give me Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 to 5 oh me hallelujah Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4 to 5 he said then the word of the Lord came unto me saying before I formed Listen, oh, listen very well. Remember, I said the words of God, every word that is in this Bible is eternal. What God said to Jeremiah now is it's applicable to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because if God said, Before I formed you, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Does that mean that it's only Jeremiah that that applies to? No, it applies to every human being. Before God formed Jeremiah, God said, I knew, I knew, where was he? Where was Jeremiah? Somebody talked to me. Where was, God said, before I formed you in your mama, before God, your, your, before your, your, you get into your mother's womb and you fertilize the egg and you become a fetus, an embryo, and whatever. I already knew who Jeremiah is. So, you are an idea in the mind of God before you were created. You came out of God. God knew you. If, when, I, when God said, I knew you, it's not as if I know you are far off. You know, when you just got, when I was in coaching with my wife, if you ask me, do you know her? When we are in university together, I said, do you know Sister Jennifer? I said, I know her. We, we, we attend the same fellowship. That's all I can say. Then as I grow closer, and we start coaching, do you know Sister Jennifer? Uh, I know her. I know that uh, she loves me. Uh, we are cutting together. We'll go and get married. But do I, do I really know her? I don't know her yet. But when she now moves into my house, if you now ask me, do you know Sister Jenny? I say, she's my wife. Now what are you talking about? But do I really know her? You cannot know a woman till you die. <laughs> you can forever, you will forever be learning. My brother is smiling. <laughs> you will forever be knowing that woman. <laughs> Because every day is new dimension. <laughs> new dimension. <laughs> Hallelujah. But God said, I know you before I formed you. When God said, I know you, he knows you to the minutest of your personality. He knows every detail about you. 
He knows the cell in your body, the DNA in your body, every blood flowing through your vein. God knows everything about you. What makes you tick? What makes you cry? What pains you? God knows everything. Before you, that was before he created you. <laughs> Are you listening to me? And then he said, and be, that's before I formed you in the belly. I, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of your mother's womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a... Now, that means there is a purpose for the life of Jeremiah. God have ordained that Jeremiah would be a prophet before he was born. His purpose was in God. Jeremiah was born in the family of a priest. He's, he was a Levite. He, do you know that he became a prophet? Even though he was born a Levite. He was supposed to be in the temple, sacrificing every day. But God said, no, 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 no. That's not my purpose for you. Where you were born doesn't determine my purpose for you. Hallelujah. God took him and made him. Listen. And your purpose is hid inside Jesus Christ. You cannot find that purpose outside Christ. That's why you need to follow him. Follow him. Tell your neighbor, follow him. Follow Say it one more time. Hallelujah. You see, Jesus, sorry, follow Jesus and find your purpose in and through Jesus. The one who created you, the one who died for your sins, to rescue you by his blood. Moses found his purpose. Joseph dreamed a dream. Samuel had a calling. What about you? Have you found your purpose? Moses found his purpose. 80 years old. He, found her, he was leading sheep about. One day, he just saw one bush burning. He said, ah. the, it was a common scenario in in the desert because of the heat in the desert suddenly the bushes the shrubs will catch fire will be lit with ignited and they will be burning but this particular day this particular day Moses have always been seeing that those things happen but he saw this one this day he said, ah, this one is different from all the other one that one is burning is consuming the other one is burning is consuming but this one ah, why is this one burning and it's not being consumed. He now said, I will now turn. I will now. Before he ignores all those, he ignored them. He ignored the bush burning because they are all consuming. But he couldn't ignore this one. He said, I will now turn and see why the bush is burning and it's not what? Consumed. That was how he discovered the purpose of God. Son of God, listen to me. Child of God, listen. Each time God tried to get your attention, huh, it's for a purpose. When God is attracting you, when God is bring, trying to bring, each time you see that new dream, each time you see that revelation, each time you feel that anointing, it is God trying to get your attention and bring you into purpose. Don't ignore it. Tell your neighbor, don't ignore it. Say it one more time. Each time the spirit of God is fluffing in your belly, it is time to discover purpose. Hallelujah. Moses gave attention. Some of us, we don't give attention. You feel the spirit of God hovering over you and you don't give attention. You want to go and make toast. That's the time you will eat. And then you don't discover the purpose of God for your life. Each time that song, I woke up one morning, song was, is in my heart. The song was rhyming, was singing. It is over now. It's over now. I just, where is the song? It's coming from here, not here. It's over now. It's over. So I asked the Holy Ghost, what is over? And he told me what is over. He's trying to teach you something. Hallelujah. Yeah. Discover purpose in Christ. Discover purpose in Christ. See, surrender your life to Jesus and discover and focus on his purpose for your life. We're talking about focus here. And it all begins, begins when you discover Jesus. When you find Jesus, you find purpose. Peter found Jesus. He found purpose. James found Jesus. He found, on the way to Damascus, Paul was on his high horse to go and commit crime for the state against the Christian. On that way, Jesus collided. The light of heaven collided with him. The intensity of that light was powerful. Knocked him off his high horse. He fell to the ground blind. He rose up blind. That day, he discovered purpose. He least expected that that day he will meet Jesus. Jesus collide, when Jesus collides with you, you find purpose. You find purpose. You discover the reason for God creating you. 
Until you discover that, your life will be a waste. Until you discover Jesus and find your purpose in Christ, you will be forever frustrated. God will help you and me. Life without Jesus and life outside Jesus is meaningless. Meaningless. Somebody say meaningless. Say outside Christ. Life is meaningless. Hallelujah. He said, I am the way. They look, let me, before I go to that one, give me Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 3 to 11. If you can put all of them together. I know it's very long. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 3 to 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 3 to 11. I sought in my heart to give myself, look, everybody look up, to give my, myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom. Do you have the amplified version? Thank you. Thank you very much. Are we there? All right, everyone, let's read the amplified version together. It says, I explored with my mind how to gratify myself with wine, while at the same time, Having my mind remain steady and guide me wisely, and how to take control of foolishness. Now, I will read you, just listen. Verse, what verse is this? Until I could see what was good for the sons of men to do under heaven all the day of, days of their lives. I, now, this is where we go. Follow me now. I made great works. I built houses for myself. I planted vineyards for myself. I, myself, I, myself. That was the life this man is. Life outside Jesus is a waste. When he, was, when he started the I and myself project, he felt that he was living life in full. I, I remember one, one school where I was teaching. You know, I'm a teacher. So at this school I was teaching. And this lady was saying, oh, are you coming out tonight? I said, come out tonight, where? Oh, it's Friday. I said, huh, Friday? I don't, I don't do that. Said, oh, get a life, Mr. Daniel. I said, I have life. I have Jesus. When you have Jesus, you have what? Life. No Jesus, no life. This man, he thought he had life. He made me himself great words. Read on. I made what? Gardens. And some of you would think, ah, if I don't have garden in my backyard, I can't live. This man tried it. His own garden is bigger than... In fact, the whole Manchester is, it was a garden for him. That's Solomon. He made, when, you, when Solomon said, I made garden, you know God gave him wisdom. He know all the... If you look, if you read the, the Jewish writing, they will tell you Solomon speaks to birds. Solomon communicates with animals. He, he, he knows all the trees. He knows their name. Solomon really made garden. It's not like the one you have in your... The shrubs you call garden. <laughs> I made gardens and what? Oh, for myself. Not for Jesus. Not for God. For myself. And I what? Planted in them. I told you. All kinds of fruit trees. There is no land. Solomon did not go on. The, the thing must grow here. He said it doesn't grow in this climate. Solomon made sure it grew. He had the wisdom. He knew the irrigation technology. So it's not today greenhouse start. Solomon knew the technology. See, I made what? Pools of water for myself. From which to water the forest and make the... He had a forest to himself. Solomon's forest, it's called. I bought male and female, what? Sla and had slaves, what? Born in my house. I also possessed, what? Herds and flocks of, what? Larger than any. My own is bigger than... You see. Oh, I just discovered that one of my one of my counselor, he has he just bought a limousine and his limousine is this length. Solomon will carry his mobile phone. He will ring the manufacturer. Hey, can you can you make me the one that is two times as long as Senator <laughs> Senator Aaron, the one you made him? His own is larger, larger. Larger, flocks, larger than any who preceded me in. Also, next please. Also, I collected for myself, see for myself, for myself, silver and what? Gold 
and the treasures of kings and prophecy. I provided for myself male singers and female singers. You know what that means? No, he closed down all the media. Nobody will say any bad thing about Solomon. The media will say, like Donald Trump trying to close down everybody. Anyone who say bad thing about him, he's going to fight them. Donald Trump even tried. Solomon closed every media outlet. He got him praise singers. People who will sing his praise. Nothing negative must be on the social media. Solomon made sure he had enough praise singers. For himself. For himself. A wasted life. You will discover. Let's read on. He said, I provided for myself male singers and what? Female. And the delights and pleasures of men. Men, he had many concubines. Listen. All dimensions of pleasure. Solomon tasted everything. He experimented with every dimension. The only one he did not try is cannabis. <laughs> he did not try cocaine. Because maybe he knew that that one would make him... <laughs> they would take him from the throne. Every dimension of indulgence, Solomon got involved. He lived a life, for, a life outside Christ. I'm telling you, it's a waste. Read on. See. So I became what? Great. And I excelled. That's what we are trying to do, isn't it? Uh, in this Manchester, I must be great. I must be great. They must know that a preacher enter Manchester. I must be great. Solomon, he said, so I became great. Solomon achieved greatness by his own power. The wisdom God gave him, he used it. God said, came to Solomon. Solomon, Solo, what do you want me to do for you? Solo put one plus one. He said, if I ask God to give me wealth now, this wealth will finish. But if I ask God to give me wisdom, if there is a way I can package my request, once God give me this wisdom, I know what I'm going to do with it. So God gave Solomon what? So Solomon take the wisdom and acquire wealth with it. That's why they said, those of you who are into spiritual gift, the best spiritual gift is the gift of wisdom. It leads every other thing. If you have wisdom, you have power. If you have wisdom, you will draw crowds. Solomon used the power to gather concubines. He used the wisdom. What did he use it to gather? Concubines. He gathered problem to himself. So I became great and excelled more than all who preceded me in Jerusalem. My wisdom also remained with me. Yes, it will remain because God don't take it. Whatever my eyes looked at, is, is, if I don't see, if I just see it, what will happen? With desire, I did not refuse them. I did not withhold from my heart any pleasure. For my heart was pleased because of all my... And this was my reward for all my labor. Then, after he has done everything, he now stood back to watch what he has done. Then I considered all which my hands had done and labored to do. And behold, behold, all was what? I told you, life outside Christ is vanity. Don't chase material things. He said, eh, Solomon's time has gone. It's my turn. I will do my own. I will do my own. The man who have done it and have accumulated more than you see the conclusion he's making. Material things don't bring satisfaction. It's only the purpose of God for your life that you focus on and pursue that brings satisfaction. If you put Paul the Apostle here, you put Solomon here, and you ask them which of them got more satisfaction while they were on earth, Paul the Apostle will tell you I got more satisfaction. Why? Because I discovered my purpose in Christ, which is to be an apostle to the Gentiles. And for the rest of my life, I pursued that to the point where they chopped up my head. The last epistle he wrote, I have fought a good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished my course. Immediately as he's finishing writing that, they took him to the guillotine. And then, boom, cut his head off. And he died. Sudden death, sudden glory. Solomon died naturally. Huh? At the end of the life of Solomon... All he was crying on the street. Bagan vanity. Bagan vanity. Who cares to hear, has to hear me? All is vanity. When he was pursuing those things, it, 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 nobody could tell him, oh, 
Soft, soft pedal. These things you are pursuing. Like I'm telling you now. Like I'm telling you now. Find your purpose in Christ. What did I say? If you don't find your purpose in Christ, you will be forever frustrated. At the end of your life, this is what you will say. Vanity and a chasing after the wind. Can you pursue wind? Answer me. Who have ever gathered all the wind in this world? No. And there was no what? Prof nothing of lasting value. Nothing of lasting value. So that is why you need to follow Jesus. Because when you follow Jesus, you will discover the purpose that God have ordained for you, which was hidden in Christ Jesus before the world began. And I want to tell you, when you come, when you come and you surrender your life to Jesus, it's a journey of discoveries of the purpose of God for your life till he, you enter the grave. And at the end of your life, when you look back and you are focused on God's purpose for your life, you will be able to receive a well done. That you didn't waste your life chasing shadows. You didn't waste your life chasing wealth. Yes, you need wealth for the, not for yourself, for the kingdom. The, all the, I'm going to teach you focus. This focus I'm teaching you, I'm just F, follow Jesus. What did I say? And I will, as you follow Jesus and you find purpose, your purpose in Christ, you now need to focus on that. That is what drives your life. That's the motive beyond your existence. Why are you living? Why do you get out of bed every day? Is it because you go on NHS, I work, I'm a teacher, I'm an engineer, I'm a this, I make money, send money to wherever I'm sending money to, I need to buy that house and for yourself? That's a useless life. That's the life Solomon lived. Hallelujah. Look at John chapter 14. Give me John chapter 14 verse 6 and then we see one more passage and we pray. John 14 verse 6, King, King James Version, please. John 14 verse 6. Jesus said unto him, Jesus is talking to you now. What is he saying to you? I am the way. I am. The, there is no other way. You got to follow me. If you follow any other way, it will lead to eternal damnation. It will lead to suicide. It will lead to dissatisfaction. It will lead to frustration. It will lead to defeat. It will lead to darkness. He says, I am the way. I am the what? Truth. And the life. Now, what is the truth? Jesus is telling you, I am the reality. That word truth, the Greek meaning means I am the reality. There is no reality outside Jesus. I am the reality. I am creation itself. God is not in eternity. God is eternity. Eternity. God is eternity himself. God is bigger than the whole of cosmos. God is bigger than space. Are you listening to me? Jesus is reality. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. What does life mean? This way. Jesus himself is the existence. There is no existence outside Jesus. Every existence you try to have outside Jesus is a fake existence. That's why you see millionaires commit suicide. If money will satisfy, why do they commit suicide? I am the reality. Find your reality in Jesus. Did you hear what I'm saying? Find your reality in Christ. Stop living a fake life. I used to, when we sit around the table in my place of work, and this one is talking, peck, 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 peck. they are trying to outdo one another. Uh, that's the time I like relaxing very well. I just relax. I don't need to prove anything to anybody. Eh? I don't live a fake life. I don't need to prove to you huh? anything about me. I don't need to prove anything. My reality is not your opinion about myself. My reality, I've discovered it long ago. In who? In Christ Jesus. When you discover your reality in Christ Jesus, life becomes easy to live. You don't need to prove anything to anybody. I don't need to heal the sick to prove that I'm a man of God. My reality is in who? In Christ, in Christ Jesus. So you don't begin to live just to try to please people. Just to try to, I don't know the word to use now. Huh? You appeal to people to create wrong impressions about yourself. You're living a fake life. From today, I kill that Mr. Fake in your life. Yeah. You don't live any fake life again. Be yourself. Find your reality in Jesus Christ. Your worth is not in that cloth you are wearing. It's not in this suit. Yeah, I need to dress well because... As the pastor, I need to represent Christ if I don't dress shabbily because some people will not come here again. 
said that your pastor is a disgrace. <laughs> Color riot. He didn't dress well. So I got to decorate myself very well, present. But that is not that is not my reality. That's not who I am. Are you listening to me? Your dressing does not define your person. Neither does your salary define your worth. What is your worth? Your worth is the life of Jesus. The Bible says he gave his life for you. When God will pay the debt of your sin, he did not pay with the life of an angel. He paid with his own life. That is what you're worth. Find your reality in Jesus. That's what I'm telling you now. Find your reality in Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way. There is no other way. I am the way. There is no other way. The way to approach God. The way to relate to God. There is no other way. And I am the truth. I am the reality. I am the life. I am the existence. Existence itself. Outside, when you go to space, what do you see? Death. Everything is dark. No life can grow there. Outside Christ, no life. Discover Jesus today. I tell you before you go. Find Jesus and follow him. Rise up. Let's pray. Oh, wait. Sit down. I have not finished. Matthew chapter 4. If I say I want more, give you one more blessing. Now. Somebody, your amen will take this roof off. Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. Give me Matthew chapter 4 verse 19. That's the final one, I promise. And this is Jesus speaking. And he saith unto them. What did he say? Follow me. And I will make you. Listen now. When you follow Jesus, he doesn't break you. When you follow Jesus, he makes you. Jesus make you who you're supposed to be. He said, I will make you fishers of men. That's what he made those disciples. And that's what he wants to make every Christian. But there is something that Jesus makes you. He makes you in his own image. He, he reproduces himself in you. Such that when they say you are a Christian, it means you are a little Christ. See Jesus here, see you, they cannot differentiate between you and Jesus. He makes you like himself. He is here to make, bring many sons into glory. Jesus said, I will make you. All you need to do is what? Follow me. Follow me. Follow me, I will make you. Don't worry about what is going on around you. You just follow me. Keep your eyes on me. Put your step where I put my step. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. As you are following me, you will find your reality in me. Put your leg where I put my leg. Do it as I, like the Lord is telling me, do it as I do it. Don't do anything spurious. Just do it in my name. Finish. What he's giving me is what? His name. Put your leg where I put my leg. In the steps of Christ. Follow me. And as you follow me, you will find your reality in me. And as you follow me, I, Jesus, I will make you. Rise up. Let's pray. He will make you. I say he will make you. Yes. He will make you. Lift your hand and just worship him. Say thank you Jesus. Because I'm going to focus on you. I will follow you. I have just dealt with the number one. Focus. Or focus. F for follow Jesus. It's a series. I will carry on if God permits next Sunday. Say Lord I will follow you. I surrender my life to you. Where is Brock? I will follow you. I will follow you. I will follow you. Say, Jesus, I will follow you. I yield my life to you. I will follow you, Jesus. Jesus, you I will follow. Right, lift your hand. Sing with me. I surrender. Sing it from your spirit. I surrender. Sing, sing, sing. All to thee, blessed Savior. I surrender. Do you surrender? Surrender. Oh, my blessed Savior, I surrender. Do you surrender? Oh, my name, my name. 
name. Yes, Lord, we surrender all. I surrender. All to you, my blessed Savior. I surrender. All right, would you lift your hand up and say after me, say, Lord Jesus. I thank you because you died for me and you rose again to justify me. Right now, this very moment, I surrender my life to you. That purpose that I have in you before the foundation of the world, I surrender to you for that purpose. I surrender my spirit to you. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my soul to you. I surrender my body to you. Jesus, from today, I belong to you. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse my sins away. Come into my heart. Change me now. Jesus, give me power to follow you. To follow you. To focus on you. To follow you. Jesus, I believe and I thank you for answering me. I receive power to follow Jesus to the end of my life. In the name of Jesus. Give a big hand to Jesus. He has answered you. Father, I thank you for all this, your children. Thank you because you have spoken lovingly sternly to your children, to everyone here. And everyone have responded to your call to follow you. Right now, I release grace upon everyone. Amen. Grace to follow you to the end. Amen. Grace to focus on Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Father, I bless your name. Those who need miracles, in the name of Jesus, receive your miracle. Amen. Those who need healing, in the name of Jesus, be healed. Amen. Those who need deliverance, in the name of Jesus, be delivered. Amen. I arrest every demon, every evil spirit. I bind you and I command you, come out of their bodies in the name of Jesus. Amen. I break demonic powers over your life. I break those powers now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Everything wrong with your body. Everything wrong with your lungs. Everything wrong with your kidneys. Everything wrong with your legs. Everything wrong with your heart. Everything wrong with your womb. Everything wrong with any part of your body. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command a miracle to come upon that part of your body now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive your miracles! Receive your miracle! 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 In the name of Jesus! Thank you, Father. You are healed. Thank you, Father. May the Lord be with you. Amen. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. Amen. May the Lord bless you. Amen. May the Lord go with you this week Amen. and open, open all good doors for you Amen. and shut all bad doors. Amen. May the Lord give you favor. Amen. May the Lord raise helpers for you. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name.